Thank you for joining us today in Jennifer Schaus and Associates complimentary webinar series. We are coming to you live today from Washington, DC. This year on Fridays, we are covering procurement playbooks. We will take a deep dive into doing business with federal agencies and departments with our panelists. On Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, we will cover the FAR supplements or procurement regulations for the agencies and departments. And on Fridays, we will cover the business development and marketing aspects of the same agencies and departments, the full schedule and sign up links and recordings are on our website. We'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors. The Virginia PTAC at GMU offers free one on one counseling to firms in Virginia on federal, state and local procurement topics. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. If you are interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore what PTACs can offer. And a special thanks to our sponsor, the Federal Business Council. The FBC creates and manages virtual and in-person meetings and events to connect appropriate industry and government thought leaders, product providers, and solutions with government programs that use them. The FBC works with admission-specific programs for a variety of agencies to connect government and industry in the form of in-person and virtual conferences, trading events, policy dialogue, and outreach. Over the last 40 plus years, FBC has become a comprehensive resource for connecting industry and federal government. <clears throat> Dastin is an IT and cloud solutions provider working with corporations, the military, and government agencies to lower their costs, increase scalability, improve operational efficiency, and meet compliance regulations using targeted cloud-based solutions. Dastin is a certified partner of Oracle NetSuite, a premier tier Google Cloud partner, and a certified partner of Cisco, VirtuDocs, and AODocs, and Authenticate. <clears throat> For more information about Dastin services or to schedule a complimentary consultation, please email joe.alston or visit the Dastin website. Finding a reliable online source for keeping up with government tech trends and regulations can be overwhelming and time consuming. Gov White Papers is a free and easy to use resource for the public sector and supporting industries to find and share government and military related content, saving your time and serving your country. Topics include Homeland Security, International Commerce, Cybersecurity, Supply Chain, AI, and much more. Gain peace of mind understanding trends and technology to modernize and run your organization efficiently while streamlining technology adoption. Claim your free membership on govwhitepapers.com today to access thousands of free uh, government and military ebooks, white papers, infographics, case studies with fresh content added daily. Please join us at the Kennedy Center for a night of networking with over 200 federal contractors. Our quarterly event will take place on Monday, June 20th. Sponsorship opportunities are available and federal agencies will be present and listed as they confirm. Please note that ticket prices increase on June 13th. We hope to see you there. Today, we are covering the Department of State. Our panelists today are Ms. Archiza Meehan and Anna Erman. Uh, we want to thank our friends at GovSpend, Ms. Archisha Meehand, and Anna Arman from the Department of State for also joining us today. Um, we will now be looking at the business opportunities and contra contracting trends within FedMine. Archisha, it's great to have you with us today. I'll mute myself now and just let me know when you are ready for the next slide. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, uh, glad to be here. Uh, and if we could get to the next slide. Uh, so my name is Archisha Meehan, and I'm the FedMine Senior Product Manager at FedMine, a GovSpend company. Um, always happy to be part of the Playbook series, so thank you, Jennifer, for inviting us and including me. Um, and glad to be here for today's session with Anna, who is an amazing uh, speaker and has done so much for the small businesses, um, those of us in the D.C. area. Know her well and thank her for all her work. So excited to have Anna on this um, session. So a little bit about FedMine. Uh, FedMine was founded way back in 2004 and is a federal market intelligence platform that basically integrates all the various 18 federal data sets into a simple, easy to use platform to basically allow reporting and analysis that was not previously possible. 
Uh, as of last uh, July, we are now part of GovSpen, the largest provider of um, you know uh, purchase order data and uh, information regarding uh, to the state, local, and education markets. So next slide. So this is just a quick look at some of our data sets, um, you know, wh where we pull all the pull all the information from. We definitely get all our contract data from FPDS, and then we integrate it with all these other various data sets. So let's go to the next slide. slide. Um, and we typically work with not only small and large federal government clients, um, agents, yeah, contractors, but we also work with many federal uh, agencies that use our platform for market research. So next slide. So let's get into the Department of State. So for those of you who've heard me before, um, you know that I'm always going to take a couple of minutes to talk about the, the uh, agency's mission and what it does. So in this case, you know, the U.S. Department of State's um, mission is to basically promote uh, U.S. security, prosperity, and the democratic values, and basically shape an environment in which all Americans can thrive. Um, today, uh, you know, they do a lot more. They do work to fight terrorism. They protect our interests abroad and implement our foreign policy initiatives to really help build a free, prosperous, and secure world. Um, I did not know, but the first Secretary of State was Thomas Jefferson, um, and with his small staff of not even uh, six, seven people, uh, the agency's workforce now includes more than, I would say, 70 or 1,000 um, employees and members and staff, and covers more than 270 diplomatic missions worldwide. Um, and I like to talk about this, and I'm sort of pointing this out a little bit, at, because as we sort of get into understanding where the contracts are, who's been winning contracts, things like that, um, you will notice that given the fact that the Department of State is spread across 270 missions worldwide, there is going to be a lot of work that is done outside the continental U.S. So next slide, please. So last year, we have the agency awarding more almost $10 billion to less than 7,000 companies. It definitely is an increase over FY20, which was the year of the pandemic. Um, interestingly, and this is where you know we need to pay attention, uh, more than 4 billion of the work that was done was done outside, the place of performance was outside the continental US. So next slide. Um, quick look at your top companies. Um, they cover, they include construction related companies such as Cadell, uh, but uh, also Cherokee Nation, General Dynamics, um, uh, you know, Accenture, uh, a lot, a nice mix of companies. Um, next slide. In terms of the, oh, okay, this is interesting. Um, in terms of the type of work that they do, uh, it includes, um, I need to fix the slide, uh, the, the title of the slide, but in, in, in terms of the work and the NAICS codes that, you know, uh, that we see used, you have construction, security guards, facility supports, um, you know, and engineering services. I always like to also look at the PSC codes because a lot of times that give us a lot more insight into the type of work that is being done. So um, I'm always gonna tell clients, pay attention on the PSC codes as you're also looking at the NAICS codes. Um, so next slide. So in terms of the small business, um, the agency has definitely done very well um, and uh, has, um, you know, I think done more than uh, 40 odd percent of contracts were awarded a small business. Um, we have $4 billion uh, that were awarded to a little, uh, to almost 2,300 companies. In terms of your top companies, again, you do have Cherokee Nation Management, um, American International Contractors, Phoenix Air. So a nice mix of companies from what you could see. Uh, next slide. 
In terms of these NAICS codes, um, again, you know, you now see a little, you do see some of the similar ones that were, you know, construction and facility support. But now you see some others such as, you know, the non-scheduled chartered passenger air, airfare, or computer facilities management services. So it's always interesting to see based on the type of work that you do, what is happening or what are the NAICS codes that are being used. Um, I typically will also tell clients and, you know, I'm, I'm always going to advise, use your keywords, see based on the type of work you do, what are the NAICS codes that are really being used. Um, all of that really needs to go into, you know, your strategy. But um, in terms of the set of sides, um, we have, um, you know, the agency awarding 8A sole sources, 8A competed. Always happy to see the women-owned small business uh, set of sites being used, um, as also the SDVOSB and hub zones. So it's a really nice mix of um, of uh, set of sites that are being used by the Department of State. Um, next slide. Um, in terms, you know, with the pandemic, uh, we do have all the agencies awarding contracts under the national interest action code for COVID. And last year, so FY20, we had more than $274 million that were awarded to 214 companies. Always like to point out, and this is really good to see where, uh, you know, 57% of these contracts were awarded as small business contracts. And FY21, um, you know, the COVID spend went down to about 86 million. However, the agency did make sure that, you know, more than 50% of these contracts were awarded as small business contracts. And I think that that is really huge when you see agencies awarding a good percentage of their contracts as small business, as it sort of tells you that the agencies, you know, what what is their focus and mission and, you know, how the agency is doing. So uh, next slide. So again, for those of you who know me and have sat through these uh, sessions with me, will know that I'm always going to talk about categories. Um, this, you know, the, these are the, your top categories, and the categories are really based off um, GSA's um, category management, which is really looking at the PSC codes. Hence, I'm always telling you to look at the PSC codes because it ultimately does tie up into the major categories and. Uh, again, when you look at these categories and you look at the spend, um, it's always, you can see that the agency's doing very well in the small business spend. Um, you see that uh, small business uh, negative amount for security and protection. So when you start digging deeper into these numbers, you really will get into, um, an, uh, I'm sure there was a large de obligation that sort of skewed these numbers for last year. But uh, let's go on to the next slide. So again, as we're looking at an agency, we are understanding how are they spending, what are they spending, what contracts are being awarded as other than small business, what's going as small business within the small business contracts, you know, how is how are the various set asides being used? Um, and specifically those that are 8As. Uh, we also want to pay attention to how is the agency awarding contracts on all the various vehicles that are out there. Um, the, and then you really want to dig deeper in and, and understand based on the type of work that you do, whether you're looking at NAICS codes or keywords, uh, you know, how is the agency using these various vehicles? Um, understanding that is going to help you with your strategy, right? Whether you want to uh, get on those vehicles, whether you want to team with an existing company that is on that vehicle that's already working at an agency, those are all strategies that you want to pay attention to. Um, so within the Department of State, you can actually see that NASA Sup 5 uh, is being used, and we've seen that across many agencies when NASA Soup 5 does get used to purchase, um, you know, these uh, large IT procurements. We also see 8A stars being used by the agency, and so, uh, you know, this is where if you are on 8A stars 3, you really want to pay attention to the contracts that have been awarded on 8A stars 2, 
and um, you know see when those are expiring and if there is an opportunity for you to work on those as those contracts start coming up for a renewal or um, recompete. Also pay attention, uh, you know, Alliant 2, uh, we're really seeing the move from Alliant to Alliant 2. Again, um, definitely one of the vehicles that uh, the Department of State uses, as also, of course, OSS. So just keep these in mind. Um, the reason why, you know, clients, we, I'm always going to tell you, again, is to make sure that not only are you using keywords, you are learning, you're using keywords along with NAICS codes and doing the combination of, of all of these uh, filters to make sure that you're getting the right data. Uh, so let's go into the next, um, next slide. So let's start looking at some of the subcontracts. Um, and what, why is subcontracts important? I think it gets to be important understanding who are the primes that are awarding the various subcontractors especially if you're a small business that's looking to get started, or just sort of understanding there are there might be specific projects that might be with a larger company that you bring a certain expertise to. So looking at the subcontract data gets to be very interesting. Again, um, you know, last year while uh, the you know Department of State, more than $3 billion were reported as subcontract awards. Um, you know, you want to, pay attention on what type of work has been done. What are the various next codes that are being used or, or the works being awarded under? But do put in keywords and you know, socioeconomic status, things like that to filter the results even more. Um, let's go into the next slide. And in terms of your prime contractors that are really awarding this work, um, you know, we really are looking at the large companies such as the Accenture, CGI, SAIC, um, you know, BL Harbor Holdings, and General Dynamics. So it's a nice mix of companies. In terms of your top subcontracts, um, you know, we have Vesco Distribution, but you also have a lot of smaller companies, including, um, you know, the Right Size Solutions or um, Creative Information Technology. So it's always a nice mix of companies. Now, we want to make sure when we are trying to understand what is it that we as a small business can do, we would really want to put in our keywords and further fine tune results set. So this is just an overview, but we always want to filter in based on the type of work that we do. Um, so next, next slide. So a lot of times, you know, when we start looking at opportunities, um, what we find is that, you know, of course the opportunities can be based off the new opportunities that are based off the new initiatives of the agency. And truly it depends on the agency's requirements and the funding that is available. It also is a mix and can be contracts that are expiring, especially in the services industry that could possibly be recompleted. How do you get this information? Typically, um, looking at the budget and program information is super helpful. Understanding the agency's plan over the next few years, what are their requirements going to be? And, um, you know, using that information is essential um, on that you know we always want to and we always are going to encourage you to look at what are the pre-solicitations and sources sort notices that are being released because typically that is an important way that an agency is going to be um, doing their market research so do pay attention to that and then of course looking at expiring contracts um, using your keywords, using your place of performance. You know, if you are just going to be focused on the United States um, as a place of performance, fine tune result sets based on that. Um, if you are looking for opportunities and you're open to doing work outside the continental US, you actually could fine tune result sets based on that. Um, if you have any of the major IDIQs, GVACs, BPAs, that are being used by an agency run expiring contracts that are based off those vehicles um, if you're an 8a uh, start looking at 
uh, not only expiring contracts, but look at those based off when is the A day of the incumbent expiring, because all of this information should help provide you with one, the knowledge of you know the companies and the existing incumbents help you learn what are the possible theming opportunities out there and of course what is it that you can do that is better uh, than the existing incumbents right so this is why we sort of always say let's go through all the information let's go through all the past experience and procurement trends and data to understand what is our future uh, possible opportunities what could they look like so let's go further into this. Uh, next slide. If you are in the IT industry or have anything related with information technology, always, always, always pay attention um, at the department's uh, Exhibit 53s. Uh, this is just a quick look at the Exhibit 53s that's giving you an idea of what are the top IT spend for FY22 at this point, um, you know, it just sort of helps you wherever possible. Uh, these will be connected to contracts and the related Exhibit 300s. Um, so next slide. Um, and then of course, go in and look at the Exhibit 300s. Um, I personally love the Exhibit 300s because I think it gives you a lot more information, detail, tells you how the CIO is doing with that specific program. And then many times we'll give you the program manager's name too. So um, I think it is super important if you're in the IT industry to look at your exhibit 53s and 300s. Um, and again, use your keywords, use the type of work that you do, the service that you provide to fine tune these result sets even more. Um, next slide. So let's sort of, this is just to give you a quick overview. Um, you know, we have more than $12 billion in contracts that were awarded as other than large business that are expiring in the next 12 months. Now keep in mind, these will include construction related contracts, which don't always, um, you know, get recompeted. But just to give you an idea, quick look at who are your top companies and the contracts that are expiring. Um, next slide. Um, quick look at, you know, where the top place of performance is, what are the various NAICS codes, and again, this is sort of tying in with the uh, with the top uh, NAICS codes, uh, how, how, how the agency has contracted last year. So it sort of is tying in if you look at it, but you do see some other ones, including architectural services uh, in, in the top NAICS codes in terms of the contracts that are expiring other than small business. Next slide. And then when you start looking at the contracts that are expiring over the next 12 months that were awarded as small business, we have a little bit than $4 billion. Um, and again, you, you know, it's that Phoenix Air Group, which is the chartered uh, air transportation that was awarded as small business. Um, you do see uh, consulting services, and again, um, you know, a nice mix of companies and the contracts that are expiring. And the next slide. And then, of course, um, you know, when you start looking at the contracts that are expiring by NAICS codes, uh, you have your non-scheduled chartered passenger air, uh, including power and communication line NAICS codes, as also passenger car leasing. So this is an interesting mix of the expiring contracts for small business uh, when I'm looking at the NAICS codes. And then when you start looking in terms of how are the, what are the set asides that are being used in these expiring contracts, again, helps you fine tune your searches. Um, we have a very good mix of um, all the various uh, set asides that are being used. Um, so do keep in mind if you are in any of these, um, if you have any of these socioeconomic categories, especially the A days, you want to pay attention on when are those A days expiring and if there is a teaming opportunity for you out there. Uh, so next slide. Um, so this is just a quick look at, you know, what are your top opportunities that, and I just did a search for free solicitations and source of sort that are out there that are expiring. Um, 
to just give you a quick idea uh, that you know some of the opportunities. Uh, so the next slide. And then um, you know looking at the budget. Um, so the the Department of State uh, budget includes the budget for the USAID and for those that that are on the call or actually have access also to go back and see. Um, we went into pretty good detail when we covered the USAID. Um, but when you look at the budget, and we have more than 60 billion budgeted for FY23 for Department of State and USAID. Uh, of course, there is an urgent need in Ukraine, which is, uh, you know, which is going to be included in the budget and is a large part of it, as also the impact that COVID has had over the world. Uh, but some of the things that I found interesting, and I would highly encourage you to have a quick look at what the budget is, um, you know, the diplomatic programs, so, uh, you know, saw uh, an increase, or this, there's a in budgeted increase of more than 147 million. Uh, the consular board, border security programs is increasing from the FY21 uh, 22 request, as it also includes a lot of modernization um, for the systems that are there for the passport applications. So I would highly recommend people to look at some of the those um, major budget uh, changes that are included in the FY23, um, and then. Uh, also pay attention if you are in the embassy security and construction, pay attention that, you know, there is a fall of $25 million. However, when you start getting into the details, um, there is, this has really caused you the decrease in the upgrades because you've already seen that a large portion of the contracts have gone in construction, but there is an increase in operations. So um, again, the budget was very interesting and i'm always recommending you to pay attention to that um and um you know that's um that's it from me um if you have any questions do uh, feel free to email me and with that i guess krista i'm going to hand it back to you yeah thank you so much artisha for a great overview um we will now move into an inside perspective uh from the government provided by anna ehrman um, Anna, it is great to have you with us. I'll mute myself now and just let me know when you're ready for the next slide. The floor is yours. Thanks so much, Krista. Go ahead to the next slide. Um, Archisa, thank you for uh, putting down the fantastic uh, groundwork and the uh, getting all the numbers. Uh, so what I would like to do uh, is put some context in in helping you understand uh, what the numbers, what the programs, what the bureaus, what that really means. Um, so first, I'll, I'll go through some of the basics, and then uh, I will uh, completely abandon my slides and just talk to you for a minute. Uh, so first, look at our website. There's a whole lot of information. If you go to the main State Department website and you look at the bureaus uh, and agencies from uh, from the drop-down menu, you'll get a really quick sense for our mission areas. So just to give you a very broad 50,000 level view of the department, the Department of State has several major functional bureaus, which means they have a specific function across all of our worldwide presence. So for example, the Bureau of Diplomatic Security or DS, their responsibility is securing our people, securing our assets all over the world. So they manage the, um, for example, the armed guard service, which is the, one of the biggest single NICS codes. That is armed and unarmed guards at every embassy, every location that we have all over the world. There are contracts and sources sought for those uh, that go out every couple of months because there's you know, 270 or so missions, they all need work. Those very rarely actually get, aside for sm uh, get set aside for small business because there are no small businesses that are responding to it or no capable small businesses that are responding to it. So that's diplomatic security. Another one that Atricia was talking about was our Bureau of Overseas Buildings Operations. They build embassies and consulates all over the world. Uh, they spend about 25% of our dollars, so about two and a half to $3 billion in construction every year. 
the Bureau of Administration, the Bureau of um, Global Talent Management or HR, uh, Consular Affairs, that's our visa and passport services. So those are functional bureaus. The other kind of bureaus are regional. They are focused on a particular geography and all of the support and all of the work that needs to happen in a certain region or a certain country. They don't have as big a footprint. They're obviously concentrated within a specific focus, so they also have less funding because they don't need as much funding, but they have some very interesting programs. For example, the Bureau of African Affairs uh, has a, a pre-RFP right now for Global Cap. It is a, a capacity building support, uh, logistics construction and training uh, that is a recompete of a program called AFRICAP, but uh, the global cap has a slightly expanded um, a scope of work and it will be a multiple award IDIQ. I believe there will be a set aside track, but it is still pre RFP, so that's an opportunity on the horizon coming soon. Um, so just a, a, a very high level. So the, the other good resource uh, that I think is a good resource is the small business site, uh, state.gov slash small business slash. Don't forget the last slash, otherwise you'll get that 404 notice. And we try to put a lot of information to help you do your research, to help you understand the department uh, and uh, and what we do in our, um, and what are some ways to work with us. Uh, we list our upcoming events in there. Uh, so so keep an eye on that for some um, for changes as they come up. We would really try to communicate to many businesses and get the information out to you and push it to you um, so that it's useful. Right, next slide, please. Acquisition forecast. Uh, so our forecast is going through uh, a long, a long-term uh, modernization prospect uh, project right now. The office of the senior procurement executive is um, putting some systems and uh, building some back-end processes so that the forecast is going to be a lot better, probably in FY24. For now, the procurement forecast is an annual exercise that the department does. We pull it together uh, around October, November, and usually try to get it out before the turkey hits the table. And it does not really get updated throughout the year. You'll see a, a file that says updated, it's usually if there's a change or a deletion or something small, but there are no opportunities or forecast line items added throughout the year because we do not currently have a mechanism to do that. Uh, so the forecast, the best thing about the forecast is at the very right of the document, as you'll see it for each year, there is a point of contact information. Those are bureau, those are program man, uh, program office point, points of contact. So my recommendation is reach out to them. Uh, be as specific as you can. Ask close-ended or um, questions that have simple answers. So don't don't ask for a briefing how you would like to understand what they do. They don't have time for that. What you want to ask is, is this opportunity still on track? Uh, what is the timeline? What is the vehicle? And then maybe I would like to talk to you about this because I have a unique, whatever it is, solution to help them with that. Um, if they don't respond, you could always follow up with a small business office. Just forward that note and we'll see if I could uh, help you get that answer. The other, um, the other resource that I call my, uh, that I call the anti forecast and it is, it does have a link on the small business page, but I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's state.gov slash DS dash one nine one zero dash report. That's DS dash 1910 report. And that is a bi weekly publication of acquisition strategies after they have been approved by the contracting office and after our office, OSDEBU, has concurred on those. So, market research has been done. We've determined how we're going to pursue it, if it will be set aside or not, and if we're going to use any of the GWACs or not. And then we publish it and uh, you get a sense for kind of the running cadence of what's coming up, what's on the short list, what will be procured relatively in the near future. Now, as of the date of that approval that you'll see, the agency has 12 months to make that acquisition. 
but typically that happens uh, shorter than, uh, than 12 months. So that could be a good tactical resource for you as well. Next slide, please. I am proud to say that the Department of State has uh, received an A or better for the last 12 years, since 2010. And in fact, we have met for the last few uh, fiscal years, we have met most of our socioeconomic goals. Uh, the, the only exception to that is in FY 2021, the department did not meet its women-owned small business prime contracting goal. We missed that by 1%. The way that we look at our small business goals is um, the department has to meet the goals top down. So it's not that each bureau is responsible for making the, you know, whatever it is, the, the small business goal for the year and then 5533. It is a department as a whole. Some bureaus uh, can meet that goal easier than others. Uh, diplomatic security usually, and IRM usually have a much higher uh, goal percentage. Some other ones just can't do it based on their, um, their need or their operations. Every year, the department negotiates our top small business goal with the Small Business Administration. Every federal agency does that. And then the socioeconomic goals are set by statute or actually they have been set by statute until FY 2022 um, because uh, President Biden issued the uh, Executive Order on Equity, that's Executive Order 13985 on equity, uh, uh, racial equity and access for underserved communities. And uh, following that executive order was OMB Memo 0322 which established uh, a call for higher goals for the small disadvantaged businesses. So in FY22, the State Department SDB goal, the small disadvantaged business goal, is 21%. The women-owned business, small business goal is 5%, and SDV, OSB, and hub zone goals are 3% each. Now, how we approach meeting all those goals is looking at our top-down number where we need to get to, but we try to meet it bottom-up. So we review every acquisition over the simplified acquisition threshold that comes to the uh, OSDEBU office. And based on market research, we determine whether or we, uh, we make the determination or uh, agree or disagree with the contracting officer's determination of whether or not uh, those uh, requisitions, those um, programs could be set aside for socioeconomic category. We look at how we did in the previous fiscal year, and every year we establish an order of preference. So in FY21, for example, we did not meet our women-owned small business goal. So that is our number one order of preference. Service disabled veteran is our number two. 8A or small disadvantaged business is number three. And hub zone is number four. And that directly correlates to how we did in meeting our goal last year. So when there's a, a new opportunity or a recompete that was um, you know, full and open or total small business before, we look at market research and we determine, can it be set aside from women on small business? If yes, that is the set aside. If not, we look at the next one, SDVOSB. Could set aside for that, we do so. If not, it's 8A, and if not, it's hub zone. If not, total small business, and if not, then it's unrestricted. And um, we, um, we, we follow that and we work very closely with acquisitions and help them with their market research so that we could strive to meet all of our socioeconomic goals each year. Um, fingers crossed that we'll do a better job in FY22. We're certainly working hard on that. Next slide, please. Every year we do a couple of industry days and outreach events that the department hosts. Uh, we just had a really successful one in April uh, that was in Arlington, Arlington, Virginia. Uh, the next one is June 9th in partnership with the U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce, and that's uh, being held uh, in Charleston because we have a significant acquisitions, uh, contracting, and um, um, a bureau or administration bureau presence in Charleston. So um, it is uh, good for us and our contracting staff that is down there to meet with industry as well. So I, I recommend that one. Uh, 
And then there will be a subcontracting focused conference in August. I believe it's August, 20, uh, August 24th, 2022. I don't yet have the details whether or not it will be virtual, hybrid, or in person. Um, so stay tuned for that. Look at our state.gov slash small business slash. We'll post it there. We'll also post it on sam.gov. And then as our programs bureaus and uh, requirements have specific uh, calls for uh, outreach conferences, industry days, uh, pre-solicitation events, they post those to sam.gov. And also uh, follow the uh, Office of the Procurement Executive at the Department of State LinkedIn page. They stood, at, uh, stood up that page a few months ago uh, and uh, they try to share uh, those notices and uh, significant department news as well. So I recommend the Office of the Senior Procurement Executive LinkedIn page as um, just as a good uh, State Department resource. Uh, they keep it pretty interesting and they respond and interact with, uh, with industry as well. The Department of State uh, is uh, more and more active on LinkedIn, so lots of great information uh, that is shared there. Um, you could uh, connect with me as well. I, I spend uh, spend quite a bit of my free time there. Um, next page, please. So I, um, I'm going to highlight a, a few of these, but I'll, I'll let you read the rest because as our teacher was talking, I had so many other notes uh, and so much good stuff to share with you that uh, I want to spend my time uh, not on rereading what, what you can see. First, I, I do want to stress that for most of our professional services, IT opportunities, uh, a facility security clearance will be required. So that is not something that the department uh, has an easy streamlined path to obtain so if your company does not possess an fcl look at the faq that's posted on our small business page and um, try to identify some teaming partners uh, some subcontracting opportunities where your prime would be able to sponsor your company for a clearance that is often an, an easier and smoother path for your company to get an fcl uh, than um, than trying to work with the department directly um, and uh, I'll, I'll leave you to read the FAQ and you could follow up with me if you have uh, specific questions on that. Um, this, the, second, uh, the second point here, uh, understand the customer's mission. That, uh, now, the point says write to, and obviously you want to write any responses to market research and sources sought uh, and RFIs uh, relevant to the mission. But do understand that the Department of State is led by, in in our efforts and in our missions and in most of our bureau leadership by diplomats. So their focus is on foreign affairs, it is on diplomacy, it is not necessarily in the minutia of contracting. And they see contracting and they see all the great support that industry provides as a part and parcel of delivering on their mission. So they're not in, they're not coming to work so that they could award a contract. In fact, they expect the contractors help them out in fulfilling the mission. So put yourself in their shoes. And in fact, when you're looking at the obligations, and if you listen to this again, you know, go um, listen to the first part of the presentation, all the numbers with this in mind. For example, uh, when Ashisha was talking about the significant de-obligation uh, in one of the NAICS codes, what happened? Well, world events happened. We had plans to do significant work in Afghanistan until August 2021 happened, and we had to de-obligate those funds and terminate those contracts because we all of a sudden didn't have a presence in Afghanistan. Uh, we did have a significant need for unchartered air transportation in Afghanistan because we were evacuating people and then in the other local countries because of additional needs to move people around, uh, move our contractors, move our um, uh, diplomats and move the families and, uh, and provide that kind of very, um, very important uh, work. So led by world events, absolutely. Um, was our funding uh, the same last year as it is this year? No. Um, 
is it shaped by what is happening in the news? Yes. Um, if, for example, I um, I was working hard with a contracting officer on uh, a set-aside contract to provide uh, travel services for a conference uh, on uh, international narcotics and law enforcement in Ukraine. Well, that did not come to pass because bef uh, as that contract was in the last stages of uh, award and signing paperwork, um, Mr. Putin had other plans. So we are um, we are somewhat reactive. In fact, the budgets uh, that uh, our teacher briefed you on that may change as we're all uh, watching the news and waiting for that forty billion dollar package um, for uh, aid to Ukraine uh, to get signed into law. If it does, that will mean some work that we have to do uh, that the department has to do in Ukraine. Uh, what work it is, what how that will turn into um, investments or contracts or support work or sending uh, federal staff to uh, to Ukraine, I don't know yet. We don't know yet, uh, but that is something that is um, that is down the pike, uh, probably. You know, providing Congress and the president do what uh, we read about last week. Uh, and if that doesn't happen, then uh, major changes will happen, and uh, we'll see what that turns out to as well which means our work is always exciting. Um, so as you are pursuing work and as you're looking at the budgets and the opportunities, you have to understand the context of the mission, uh, right? Our leaders are Democrats, they care about uh, what, what their role is and what they mean to accomplish in the world. They also, if you understand them as their, um, you know, as people, humans in their professions, they also move. A uh, foreign service uh, typically moves posts and moves countries every two to three years. So for your business development and pipeline, uh, understand that your customer is not necessarily going to be your customer at the beginning and the end. In fact, always have a backup when you are building relationships. Understand who else is working on that project on the government side so that you always have a continuity as you are uh, pursuing your um, uh, your uh, pi uh, pipeline opportunities within you know 18, 24, 36 months. So be aware that your customer as the department, your customer as a bureau, and your customer as humans have a different priorities, different pools, and different um, uh, circumstances happening beyond just your contract. So getting outside of your worldview and really understanding the customer is useful. Um, also understand that um, our acquisition planning process is going through improvements. Currently, our acquisition planning uh, is um, somewhat tactical and somewhat led by um, deadlines. So when you're looking at a contract expiration, um, there's not always market research uh, published 18 months in advance. So some some will be shorter term opportunities, quick turnarounds. Um, so if you're paying attention to a particular office or bureau, understand their operations, understand the environment, their current contracts. So when something comes up on SAM or through one of your uh, portals, be ready to address it and respond to it. And having a good relationship with your customer, having an understanding with your customer um, certainly helps you be prepared for that. Um, so let's see, uh, uh, certainly uh, understand uh, that uh, significant opportunities for U.S. firms to work overseas do exist. Uh, we spend about 10% uh, uh, of our budget on work that is outside, outside the U.S. Know that opportunities that are procured and performed entirely OCONUS do not have to follow FAR 19, so they do not have to be set aside. Now, they can be. We certainly encourage our embassies and, um, and missions to buy from U.S. small businesses, but unless there's a specific requirement for clearances or for um, U.S. citizens to perform the work, they have choices. In fact, they're sometimes encouraged to work with local economies uh, and buy from local businesses as well. So when you are doing your business development, when you're selling to the embassies, don't lead with your small business certifications. Uh, because first of all, don't lead with your small business certifications, regardless to who you're selling. You want to sell your expertise. You win on what you deliver. 
uh, but with respect to the overseas, they don't even have to consider small business. So make sure that you provide your um, your core capabilities and your differentiators. And as a leave behind also, um, you, you do want to mention that they could help the department meet its small business goals, um, which are becoming more prevalent because everybody's talking about and implementing uh, the executive order and equity. So support for small business in underserved communities is a more common refrain and a more common theme around the department so it's important but not nearly as important as you helping us helping the department meet our mission in the world so i'm just going to close with that um, and hand it over back to krista thank you so much anna um just one more time um please join us at the kennedy center for a night of networking with over 200 federal contractors our quarterly event will take place on monday june 20th sponsorship opportunities are available federal agencies will be present and will be listed as they confirm please note that ticket prices increase on june 13th we hope to see you there um, thank you so much to our great speakers and our sponsors and everyone who attended the presentation today the recording and slides will be available um, by close of business monday and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week as we dig into the department of treasury the uh, FAR supplement will be on Wednesday and playbook on Friday. The registration links are on our website. Thank you so much, everyone.